Well, our next guest is a Danish marine biologist who has a new book out about orcas. The Killer Whale Journals, Our Love and Fear of Orcas, gives a fascinating look into the world of orcas and our relationship to them. Welcome to New Day, Hannah Strager. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. Um, you and I were talking a little bit before about our perception of orcas. How did you get into researching them? Well, for me, it was a coincidence. I, I ended up, I volunteered to be a cook on a small research vessel in Norway, and I just got hooked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't go back. Does your research now that you, you, well, you're researching, does it include orcas outside of Europe? Like, we have many pods here. Well, actually, I started to collect stories of people's relationship with orcas all over the world. So I've traveled to many different places. I've been here, there are stories from here, there are stories from Greenland, Iceland, Norway, especially where I worked a lot, and even Russia mm -hmm. and Australia. When I, there's something about your title that I think would throw a lot of people for a loop who are from here. It, it, the title is Our Love and Fear of Orcas. Because they're here in Western Washington, Orcas are revered. I mean, they're everywhere. They're part of everything that we, we stand for in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, when there's a pod sighting, everything stops. I mean, we were on a, a ferry, and, and the whole ferry stopped, and everyone runs out to the deck to see them. But in other parts of the world, they're called, like you say, killer whales. They're not loved by everyone. Isn't that right? No, and they've actually both been feared and persecuted. I've worked in Norway for many years, and right up until this, when I started working there, they were, they were still killed. Maybe a thousand whales were killed in the 10 years before I started working there. In Iceland, they've been killed. In Greenland, they're still killed. Um, and there are different re reasons behind this fear and behind this sometimes even hatred. They have also been persecuted here. Uh, so it's, I've, I've been interested in what it takes to change attitude. Yeah. How do we do that? Well, scientists have a lot to do with it, isn't that right? Scientists have everything to do with that, That's I think. Right. <laughs> because it's when we understand that they are living in tightly knit family, that they're very, very mm -hmm. intelligent, that they care for each other, we, uh, we identify, I think, yes. better with them, and we, and we start caring about them. A hun I think that one horrible story where, where the orca lost her her baby, and, and, and every single mother on the planet was like, oh. And she traveled with it for 17 days yes. with this dead little calf. Yes, and stories like that, that moves us because we realize that, well, they are living in a different world than we are, a in a world, world that we yeah. don't really understand, mm -hmm. but they are, a lot love of their behaviors is are so recognizable. Oh. It just gets me every time. Um, are there still places where orcas are being hunted actively today? I, I thought it was illegal, declared across the world. No, it, no, there are still places where they are hunted. There are still pa places where they are uh, captured for display in marine parks. Mm. Um, I, and I visited some of these places. And uh, in Greenland, um, there's an Inuit um, people who live there, and mm. they still hunt orcas. And it was a challenge for me to speak to them because I also respect their culture and their traditions yes. and their way of living. So I had to deal with this, uh, like a conflict inside my own head mm -hmm. about both acknowledging that they, as First Nation people, uh, have a right to to live the way they want to. Yeah. And But still, I want, I really think that they should think twice before killing killer whales, especially because it's sometimes the reasons are not, I think, very legitimate. They're not eating them. They're just taking them out because they don't like them. Because they don't like them. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to talk more about that, but I also want to hit back on what you mentioned, captured from marine parks. You said this is still happening. and Because I know that in the U.S. this went on for a long time. Yeah. There was Marineland, there was San Diego, there yeah. was uh, now the Tokate is coming back. Uh, this was a whale that was captured more than 50 years ago and sent to Miami. Have you followed that story at all? I have followed that story and I, uh, I also heard the recent news that there's now a movement uh, to move her back up here to where she belongs. Can she thrive? I mean I think that's the big question that we all wonder is She's been in captivity for 50 years. You bring Tokate back here and you say, hey, welcome back to the sound. 
Well, is it, it's is a really good question because and nobody and, and nobody knows the answer to that. And the people who are working to free her are very aware yeah. that you can't just take an animal that's been in captivity for 50 years and, right. and just throw it in the water and say, <laughs> good luck, cope, good luck. Yeah. So what they'll do is that they'll make a, 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 a sanctuary in, in, the, in the sea, uh, like a marine sea pen, and, okay. and they'll keep her with company because she has had human company for 50 years. Oh, so you can't yeah. just leave her on her own. And so it's, a, it's, it's an issue that I am sure that they are very aware of. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm so glad I got to talk to you about that because I had wondered, before I let you go, where do you see the hope for orca conservation? Well, what I've seen in the places where I work is that the thing that really changes people's mind uh, is when they understand how interesting and similar to us they are, mm -hmm. then people start being start changing their minds. It yeah. has happened here, it has happened in Iceland, it has happened in Norway. Now fishermen in Norway who used to hate them now lean over the railing taking pictures and videos and posting it on social media. So when you realize that what you have is really a treasure and people will travel from far away to see it, you, yeah. this it turns into a local pride of the resource that you have out there, yeah. which is something it, amazing. And that people can change. Yes, of course they can. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking with you about this. And just so you know, Hannah has a book event tonight at Elliott Bay Book Company. She's going to be joined by journalist David Newart, who also published his own book about orcas. So go check that out.